Hey, Kevin here. In this video, we will explore how you can be more productive with your CAD workflow using the quad cursor menu in BricsCAD. Do us a favor, if you find this information handy, if you'd give us a like and a subscribe, we'd greatly appreciate it. So you're probably already familiar with how to access tools and commands on the ribbon, panels, or the command line. However, in BricsCAD, there's a way to have your tools right at your fingertips. The BricsCAD Quad Cursor Menu, otherwise known as the Quad, is a complete command system located directly at your mouse cursor. The Quad is enabled on the status bar with this tool right here. Let's start by opening a quad exercise file. Using the quad, we can create entities. To demonstrate this, we'll start by zooming into an area to the bottom right of the existing graphics. Make sure nothing's selected, and you can do this by hitting escape a couple times. Right click now to make the quad appear. You can see that the quad initially displays no or no selection, but when you hover over the first tool of the panel, it will expand. The quad presents you with some options along with the top row, including file open, draw a line, draw a rectangle, and draw a polyline. This allows me to start creating right away. If one of these tools is not the one that I want, I can select the tabs just below and get access to all the other tools. So let's select the rectangle tool either from the top row or the draw panel. We're going to draw a rectangle and make it approximately 800 or 900 square. Once I've created the rectangle, now I can hover over this element and the quad expands further. So without selecting it, but hovering over it, the quad has already presented me with options on how I can modify it or do different things with it. There's an offset tool here. So let's go ahead and select offset. When you do, you can see that the rectangle can be offset in any direction. I have a dynamic input where I can key in the value. So let's say I want to bring it in towards the middle of the existing rectangle and type in 125. It'll create an offset copy exactly 125 units. I can also hover over an entity like this polyline and hold down my control key. It will only select one segment of the polyline now. Then I'm presented with tools specific to editing or manipulating just that one segment. I'm going to choose the Add Linear Dimension tool and it will let me pick and place that dimension. Now I can pick both the rectangles. And when I hover over the quad, I get a choice to create a hatch. And again, I can go to modify or edit to get the hatch menu there too. Let's select hatch. It will create a hatch based on whatever the default settings were last used. We can pick on the hatch, we can go to its properties, and we can see that the hatch type is a predefined ANSI hatch, in this case, ANSI 31. You also have the ability to right click on elements and get a right click menu, which you know many of you are familiar with, but the quad will certainly become a new favorite. I'm going to turn rollover tips back on. It's in the status bar, says RT, and it's right next to the quad. Now, when I hover over the hatch, I get additional settings for the hatch. 
right there in the rollover tip. I can pick on these settings and they're editable. So I can change the color from white to red. Now, if you want fewer or more settings, you can type in CUI or C-U-Y at the command line. It'll open up the customized dialog. And on the customized dialog, we can go to properties. Now on the rollover tab, we can select or deselect any properties we don't want presented. So maybe we want line weight instead of line type. Select OK. So the next time we hover over an element or elements, I now have line weight that I can change instead of line type. As we showed before, you can right click on any of these tools or settings on the status bar, including the quad. And it has some choices to when the quad will show. Quad on hover and quad on right click. You can also suppress quad on hover when entities are already selected. Again, these are important when you want the quad to behave in a certain way. Just come down here and check verify. We're going to go ahead and hide this dimension. We hover over it and one of the first choices on the quad is hide entities. Next, we're going to create another rectangle. Again, right click, go to the no selection quad and pick the rectangle tool or go to draw and pick the rectangle tool. Then place or drag another rectangle to the right a little bit above the first two rectangles, approximately the same size, but it's not that important. Now the nearest distance feature allows you to dynamically view and modify the distance between the two selected entities or sub entities. So once we have these two entities, I'm going to pick its first polyline and select the second one. Notice that a vector will appear between them and it's representing the nearest or the shortest distance between the two selected entities. By default, it will be a blue arrow pointing in the direction of the second element. And it presents you with a dynamic field. So you can simply type in a new value we'll type in 900, which initiates a move on that second object. Let's look at a different example. Let's draw a line diagonally between these two rectangles. Let's right click, launch the no click menu, go to draw and pick the line tool and pick two points and hit enter. Now we can select sub entities as well, like what we did when we placed the dimension. If I hover over the bottom edge of this polyline and hold my control key down, I can select just that one line segment and then pick the diagonal line we just created and get the nearest distance between those two. And again, I can pick on this field and type in the new value to relocate the line. Keep in mind the element that moves is based on which element was selected second. Furthermore, if I double click in this field or on this vector, it will now present me with the different axes that I can adjust. So I can adjust in the X, Y, and if I'm working with solids in the Z axis, now I can move this to 700 exactly in the X axis. Another useful feature built into BricsCAD is the ability to undo an operation that's been done on a specific entity. Now it only works on individual entities. So for example, we're gonna pick on hatch. So let's go to the properties panel 
and expand it. And one of the properties in the general heading of properties at the top is history. Select into the right where it says current and you'll get a drop down. You can undo one step, which was changing its color, or two steps, which eliminates it even being created altogether. This is very handy when you need to undo a very specific operation after you've done a lot of edits behind it and you don't want to undo everything. You don't want to undo all those other edits. You just want to undo this and it could be a move, it could be a rotate, it could be a copy, it really can be any type of manipulation. So as you can see, there's a lot you can do with a quad cursor in BricsCAD with your CAD workflow. Why don't you check it out yourself? We have a link down below for a free 30-day trial. And let us know if you have any questions. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.